She sneaks up on him. And she puts some wacko glue on his oh. and glues his, oh. his belly. <laughs> Ooh, that's a woman not to be with. How would you feel if every time you had to take a <laughs> you had to do a handstand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks for that guy. She's a keeper. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sri, and let's waste some time together. Today, we're gonna be watching Reservoir Dogs. This has been a long time coming because you know I had to watch a Tarantino movie for this channel, but I just want to thank every single one of you out there to my existing subscribers and to the new viewers who came in. First of all, hi, hello, have a seat. From my previous video, my recent video was not a reaction. For those of you who hadn't seen it, it was an extensive deep dive on a very eventful uh, radio hoax that happened about a hundred years ago and so many of you like left your wonderful comments and your reviews and your like feedback it was just ugh. It was like, so, I'm so grateful for all the love that you guys have shown on that video. It's it's incredible. Thank you so much. It really makes me happy that you like these kinds of like deep dive documentary style videos on Hollywood history, old Hollywood or new Hollywood. Like there's so much to like look into in the like the behind the scenes of Hollywood. Like so much stuff has happened. So the reception on that video has given me the courage to make more videos like that. But like I said in that video, and in my community posts, my reactions would be weekly. So I would be posting about two to three reactions. And then again, those videos would be bi-monthly because of all the research it takes, which I really love to do, by the way. So I figured I should like park uh, a little bit of the educational videos aside and of course move on to some fun, exciting reactions. And Reservoir Dogs has been on my list for so long. I've watched many Tarantino movies on this channel. I've watched Jackie Brown. I've watched Pulp Fiction, but Reservoir Dogs is one of those movies that I just looked at the poster and it gave nothing like there just it's just four or five people walking with like a, the uh, kind of like a, a funeral get up like they're going to some funeral or they're in a band I don't know <laughs> but I'm super excited to find out what this movie is about of course it's a Tarantino film so it's gonna be completely different to what I expect so if you want to watch the full reaction to this or if you just want to support this channel you can at patreon.com slash nation or you can make a one-time donation and buy me a coffee at Shree Nation. You can also become a channel member by hitting on the join button next to the subscribe button. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and subscribe to my second channel in case anything happens to this one. A big thanks to Internet Philosopher for helping me edit this video. You can check out his channel as well. I'm super excited for you to watch this reaction and I'm super excited for you to watch the next documentary coming in the future. So I think I wasted enough of your time. Let's get into it. It's all about a girl who takes a guy with a big dick. Entire song. It's a metaphor for big dicks. What are they talking about? <laughs> and was that Tarantino's voice? Like a virgin's not about some sensitive girl who meets a nice fella. That's what True Blue's about. No, granted, no argument about that. Which one's True Blue? That is Tarantino. Okay. So he's a part of the film, like in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I used to like her early stuff. Borderline. She got out in that pop and don't preach phase. I turned out. But you guys are That's Steve Buscemi, right? Ever since I heard that he volunteered to be a firefighter uh, during the 9-11 attacks, my respect for him has been 100%. It's all about this coos who's a regular fuck machine. I'm talking morning, day, night. Dick, 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 dick. How many dicks is that? A lot. <laughs> I love that there can't be any pearl clutchers I mean, in a Tarantino like movie, especially in a Tarantino movie sick. reaction. People who are like, why are they cursing so much? It's a Tarantino film, calm down. <laughs> you know, her pussy should be bubbling up by now. But when this cat fucks her, it hurts. It hurts just like it did the first time. Everybody is like, oh, what are we talking about? <laughs> are you going to put it away? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want with it. Oh no. They're gonna have an argument right here over a book. Want me to shoot this guy? Shit. <laughs> you shoot me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. The Tarantino dialogue is A+. plus. Also, why are they all dressed like they're going to a funeral? <laughs> is it their funeral? I'll take care of the check. You guys can get the tip. Ooh, nice Should guy. Should be about a buck a piece. Is, does he ever get his book back? <laughs> Sorry, it's my book now. Hey, I changed my mind. Shoot this piece of shit, will you? <laughs> well, at least they're nice about it. 
All right, everybody cough up some green for the little lady. Oh, no, is he not going to tip? Uh, I don't tip. You don't Oops. tip? Oops. <laughs> I don't believe in it. We don't you have don't do that culture here in India. It's like it's tied with the bill. It's never like don't an extra that. money. It's always money. in the what? bill. I don't even know the a tip. fucking Jew would have the ball to say that. It's like you can't decide what you're going to pay. It's just there. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll tip if somebody really deserves a tip. If they really put forth the effort, I'll give them something extra. But I mean, it's tipping automatically. Uh, it's for the birds. What the hell? I mean, this is the problem. Shouldn't leave it up to the customer. Uh, the waiters should get a salary paid by the customers, but the... There should be a salary, not tips. I ordered coffee, right? Now, we've been here a long fucking time. She's only filled my cup three times. I mean, when I order coffee, I want it filled six times. This is the problem. The customer shouldn't have to decide everything. <laughs> but this is quite funny. <laughs> she only filled my cup three times. <laughs> they make minimum wage. And I used to work minimum wage. You don't care? They'd count on your tips to live? Oh, no. They're going to have a principled argument. It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. <laughs> You don't have any idea what you're talking about. He's going to be very annoying at restaurants. This is a hard job. So I was working at McDonald's, but you don't feel the need to tip them, do you? The McDonald's workers get salaried, I think. I don't know. I don't know how it works in America. It's the one job basically any woman can get and make a living on. The reason is because of their tips. Fuck all that. He's going to get some bad karma or a spit on a hamburger next time. <laughs> Shit. Give me my dollar back. Hey, leave the dollars there. Yeah, the system's broken doesn't mean the waiters and waitresses should have to pay for it, you know? Give them their salary, paid by the customers, I guess. What do you mean you don't tip? They don't believe in it. Shut up. <laughs> what do you mean you don't believe in it? The old man's about to whoop his ass. I pay for your goddamn breakfast. All right, since you pay for the breakfast, I'll put in. But normally I would never do this. I don't mind what you normally would do. <laughs> so he did tip <laughs> so much for arguing <laughs> so these guys walking out like this this was like the poster that's all I know about this film by the way <laughs> this poster Just hold on buddy boy I'm gonna die. who's gonna die what's happening Give me air! She killed me, man! Who the fucking got that? Hey! What in the fucking goddamn shit happened? <laughs> they were just having lunch. Did the waitress lose her mind about low tips? Oh, I was scared the shit out of me, Larry. I'm gonna die alone. Oh! Oh, he might. This entire look at the fucking car. Look at the back oh. seat. The upholstery. Oh, oh my god. Are you a doctor? Do they not know each other? They were just having lunch. So, if you're through giving oh, me your okay. amateur opinion, slide back and listen to the news. I'm taking you back to the rendezvous. So, they're kind of like, he's kind of like trying to calm him down, but holy shit, bro, what happened? And you're gonna be okay. <laughs> you're gonna be okay. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be okay. It's always the Tarantino movies where the back seat is just shot to hell or words. completely red. Say it! <laughs> Last time it was in Pulp Fiction. Oh, there were brains in the back seat. <laughs> you gotta pay me, man! You gotta pay me! I still don't understand what happened. They didn't tell us anything except for the who's a tough tips guy? argument. <laughs> Come on, who's it's a gonna be really guy? funny if a waitress was like, "This is too low of a tip." <laughs> oh my god! Look where we are. So they're in a warehouse and also dressed alike. I'm guessing they're robbers or something. And something went terribly wrong. And it's just two guys. What happened to the rest? Stop banging your head. You're gonna bang a fucking hole in the floor. <laughs> Can't do anything for you. Put pressure on the wound or some shit. Take him to the doctor, but I guess <laughs> you have a lot of explaining you to do you. if you go to a doctor. Okay, just go to a veterinarian. To go to a witch doctor. Do something. Can you please hold me? <laughs> yeah. Oh damn. I met him for like five minutes and I feel bad for him. <laughs> Somebody put some pressure on his wound. <laughs> there might be a chance. 
Oh. Go ahead and be scared. You've been brave enough for one day. Uh. That's really sad. Combing his hair like that, that was like, I don't know, the last bit of fight. humanity that you will see before leaving, I guess. But you never know, he might survive this. Oh my god, it's raining <laughs> really loud outside. Situation is some shot in the belly. Without medical attention, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I gotta take him to the doctor. Fuck jail, man! You don't have to take me and just drive me up to the front, man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's worried that, you know, after getting stitched up, he might snitch. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, man. He's like, do I let him live or do I do the unfortunate? Tell them anything. You'll be safe, man. You're not gonna fucking die. <laughs> That's like the meme from like Spongebob or something where everything is on fire, but this is fine <laughs> with that cartoon. You're gonna wish you were dead, but it takes days to die from your wound. Time is on your side. That's not reassuring. What? Takes days. So he's gonna suffer. Gotcha. Fuck. Where's the brown? Dead. Definitely a robbery gone wrong. That's what it seems like. Somebody fucked us up big time, man. You really think we were set up? Oh, somebody was aware that they were coming. Whoever they tried to rob, they got snitched on. Remember that second wave that showed up in the cars, okay? Those are the ones responding to the alarm, man. But those first motherfuckers, I'm telling you, man, they were there and they were waiting for us. <laughs> the guy who's shot to hell has a gun, too. Oh, That's wait, really scary. He might get a little vengeful. He, like, he could be, like, you, you're not gonna drive me to a hospital. I'm gonna take you along with me to hell. Yeah. Doesn't matter if someone is a robber or a killer or whatever, you know, like the worst person in the world to watch someone like that squirming, being like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> take him to a hospital. Do what he's saying. Throw him in front of the doors. But I know what's going on in his mind. He's like, yeah, motherfucker's gonna snitch. Are you cool? I am cool. Is this movie gonna be like this? Because this is very fascinating. Because we are just seeing a uh, warehouse conversation after something has happened. Which is like a action movie antimatter or something. You know, like, this is an action movie, but also not an action movie. It's like a stage play. Interesting. It's just dialogue about something that has happened. <laughs> We're essentially watching criminals cool off after the crime <laughs> with one person dying in the background. <laughs> Doing humane things like smoking a cigarette and washing their face. <laughs> Terrence, you know, movies are so weird. I love it. Okay. Let's go through what happened. He's not gonna smoke his cigarette? Is he trying to quit? I turn around and all these cops are outside. Damn, I blink my eyes and they're there. Then Mr. Blonde starts to shoot all the in. That's not correct. So the cops were waiting for them. It takes a while for the cops to arrive, so they definitely did know. I mean, that's how I know we were set up. <sighs> Come on, Mr. White, I mean, you- Enough of this Mr. White shit! Oh, wait, 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 man, don't, don't tell me your fucking name, man. I don't want to know it. Oh. Fake names and shit. So blonde and Mr. White and all this crap. Okay. Right, this is Makes sense. So they do not know each other. They're only here for this job. Shocked Even if that. they don't know each other, shooting, so Mr. White is kind enough to, you know. Oh, we're actually gonna see it? Wilhelm scream! I always spot the Wilhelm scream. Hey! <laughs> ah! What the fuck is your problem, man? He's running from the cops, that's his problem. Oh, lord. Oh, he stole the car too. <laughs> oh my god. I like that she wasn't gonna go down without a fight. He had to physically pull her out of her car. She's like, I'm not letting go of my car. So 
so much chaos in this residential neighborhood. What the fuck? Did you kill anybody? A few cops. No real people. Just cops. I thought I was gonna get to see the actual heist, so we're just seeing bits and pieces now. I guess we have to like piece it all together. Man, could you believe Mr. Blonde? That was the most insane fucking thing I've ever seen. Why the fuck would Joe hire a guy like that? Which one was Mr. Blonde? I can't remember. Could be the big guy. I gotta get out that door and you're standing in my way. One way or the other, you're getting out of my name. way. But he was um, Bill's brother in Kill Bill. We're awful goddamn lucky he didn't tag us when he shot the place up. I came this close to taking his ass out myself. Oh, so Mr. Blonde lost his shit, started shooting everybody. That could also bring the cops in. If you have like a major shootout in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Fuck, man, you panic on the inside. And you give yourself a couple of seconds, you get, a, you get a hold of in front of this guy. He's already on edge. And there's also an injured guy with a gun. What is happening? What you're supposed to do is act like a fucking professional. Psychopath ain't a professional. You don't know what those sick assholes are going to do next. <laughs> so I guess that's the difference between sociopaths and psychopaths. A sociopath thinks before he shoots someone. <laughs> hey, look, did you see what happened to anybody else? Me and Orange jumped in the car, ground floored it. Yeah, everybody is probably scattered in different warehouses at this point. Or maybe they're all going to meet up here. I don't think it's possible one of them going to hold the diamonds and... No, diamonds! Oh. Okay, so this heist involves diamonds. They were in a residential neighborhood. Mr. Blonde shot everybody. And they had to run. And a woman shot one of the guys. Okay, piecing it together. I stashed them. Look, if you want to come with me... Let's go get him right now. Right this second, man. Because I think, uh, stay in here, man. We should have our fucking heads examined. Okay, so this guy has the diamonds. He did run away with a suitcase. We remember that. I say the plan becomes null and void once we find out we got a rat in the house. We ain't got the slightest fucking idea what happened to Mr. Blonde and Mr. Oh, Blue. There is a rat in the middle of this group. Right, right now at the station house, sweating him down. That's why the cops showed up Yeah, they don't know our names, but they could be singing about this place. Mm -hmm. One of them is a snitch. Or maybe a cop or something like that. I swear to God, I think I'm fucking jinxed. Two jumps back, it was a four-man job. <laughs> Don't tell me. It has happened to him before. I discovered one of the team was an undercover cop. Thank God we discovered time. So who's the rat this time? Maybe it's blonde. But I don't know. Maybe it is. For all I know, you're the rat. For uh, all I know, you're the fucking rat. <laughs> all right, now you're using your fucking head. Before we know, he's These the guys rat. might kill each other over who's the rat. Maybe there is no rat. Maybe the police did show up because there was a shootout. That kid in there is dying from a fucking bullet I saw him take. So don't you be calling him a rat. Yeah, they're right. Maybe the injured man could also be a rat. Man, now I'm questioning who's the rat. Go down the hall, make a left up the stairs, and make a right. Man, they haven't even checked up on the injured dude. <laughs> he's probably dead. Five man job. Busted in and busted out of a diamond wholesalers. Can you move the ice afterwards? A diamond wholesaler, okay. So. Hey, what happened to Marcellus Spivey? Didn't he always move your ice? I wonder you what, what happened. My, Marcellus Susan Spivey? Bell. We've heard of the Marcellus name before. Is it the same guy from Pulp Fiction? What's the exposure like? Two minutes tops. Daylight during business hours, dealing with the crowd. That was so insane, though. In the daylight, in the middle of so many people just running around, shooting everybody, pulling people out of cars. Without medical attention, he will die for sure. Yeah. What are we gonna do, man? We can't take him to a hospital. Take him to a veterinarian or something. Hold a veterinarian hostage and be like, stitch this guy up. Joe could get him to a doctor. Joe could get a doctor to come to see him. Assuming we can trust Joe, how are we gonna get in touch with him? Which one is Joe, by the way? Is it the old dude? <laughs> the old dude would probably shoot the injured guy and be like, no, we can't have any liability. Any snitches. Oh no, what is Mr. White thinking? Before you got here, Mr. Orange was asking me to take him to a doctor or a hospital. He begged me to do it. Yeah. Your humanity turns on a little bit if you're not a psycho like Blonde. I mean, if that's what he said, let's do it. Since he don't know nothing about us, I say it's his decision. Well, he knows a little about me. Or maybe they just don't want to dispose of a dead body. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in their minds. I told him where I was from a few days ago. It was just a natural conversation. I was telling him your name when you weren't supposed to. 
Well, after he does get stitched up, he could mention that a certain so-and-so from XYZ town... It was my fault. ...helped he me get shot. to the hospital. I swear to God, I thought he was going to die right then and there. I'm trying to comfort him. I think he is already dead. Look at the amount of blood. And he asked me what my name was. I mean, the man was dying in my arms. What the fuck was I supposed to do? I guess this is the most humane of the group, which is not a good thing <laughs> in a gang like this. Do they have a sheet on you where you're from? Yeah! Well, that's that then, man. I mean, Jesus Christ, I was worried about mugshot possibilities of So, Mr. White is definitely not a snitch. The specialty is. They're not gonna He's have a little show too the real, from the you know? out. He's making mistakes and shit. He's also worried. But I don't know about Steve Buscemi, but he's also equally terrified. Fuck you touch me for, man! Oh, no. You wanna fuck with me? I'll show you who you're fucking with! These guys are gonna kill each other <laughs> before the cops ever kill them. And you're looking at me like it's my fault? I didn't tell him my name, I didn't tell him where I was from. Shit, 15 minutes ago you almost told me your name. Yeah, he is the most human and careless of this group, I guess. You kids shouldn't play so rough. Somebody's gonna start crying. Damn. Mr. Blonde. Oh, this is Mr. Blonde, like I thought. He is the psycho. <laughs> oh, he's definitely gonna kill the injured guy. Like, that guy knows too much. He should take his secrets with him in his sleep. Did you see what happened to Blue? We didn't know what happened to you and Blue. That's what we were wondering about. What? Come on, man. Is he the snitch, undercover cop, whatever? The rat? You better start talking, asshole. Because we got shit we need to talk about. We're already freaked out. Yeah, this guy... Fucked it up, I guess. Shot everybody. Okay, let's Lost talk. his mind. We think we got a rat in the house. I guarantee we got a rat in the house. He's so cool about it, too. It's a little scary. Unnerving. We think this place ain't safe. This place just ain't secure anymore. We're leaving. You should go with us. Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> Does he make the rules now? We'll take another step, Mr. White. Fuck you, maniac! Man, he's so calm. It's your fucking fault we're in this trouble! What's this guy's problem? God, it's like a lion in the midst of, like, screaming hyenas. What the fuck are you talking about? That fucking shooting spree! In the store, remember? They deserve what they get. <laughs> He's like, it's not my fault. They pissed me off, and that's why I killed everybody. The alarm pissed me off. <laughs> if I know what kind of guy you were, I never would have agreed to work with you! Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy, or are you gonna bite? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> to think these guys are having a civil conversation about oh, girls and bite. dicks right. hey, look, in a restaurant like 15 minutes ago. And now they're like, I'm pretty sure you're okay. I'm fucking positive you're on the level. So let's try and figure out who the bad guy is. He's right? like, you're clumsy, I'm scared, and you're just too much of a psychopath to be a cop. <laughs> Which I, I, I'm really still not sure. <laughs> he, this cool act may just be an act. I bet you're a big Lee Marvin fan, aren't you? Uh, yeah, me uh, too. My heart's beating so fast, I'm about to have a heart attack. He doesn't seem like it, though. He's so collected. It's, like, unnerving. I'd like to show you guys, so follow me. Would you forget your french fries to go with the soda? No, I had them already. I got something I think you might want to see, though. It may just be a bunch of cops waiting outside. You never know. And we still gotta get out of here, you know? The lack of action in this no. movie is also quite terrifying around, because no, they're, like, on right on the edge of like killing each other, you know? It's causing me so much anxiety. Nice guy, Eddie? Yeah. What makes you think he isn't on a plane right now, halfway to Costa Rica? Because I spoke to him on the phone and he said he's on the way down here. He has somebody in his trunk, is doesn't he? He seems like the type. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe a boy in blue here can answer some of these questions about He kidnapped a police officer. You're a what piece the of work, fuck? my friend. <laughs> Ain't a bad idea. It's gonna the fuck a out cop, of me. Like, look, I got, I brought the turkey for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, so unhinged, man. Such a lunatic. Review break time. Yes, these are of course the thing, but I know that with a Tarantino film, he loves his non-linear storytelling. But I didn't think that a real life Among Us would, with like a bunch of robbers, would be this entertaining. This is perhaps like the most minimalist action movie I've ever seen, with the entire movie set as like a stage play instead of like like the real heist. And I don't know why it's so intriguing. It was also 
also clever for this movie to not reveal who the main protagonist was. And some may argue that this movie has no protagonist, like everyone is of equal importance and everyone is equally bad. But Mr. White came out as strangely as like this unsung hero of this film. Maybe because he was like the best one out of the bunch or maybe he had, it's because he had the most heart. But Harvey Keitel's charm definitely played some part in making me love him. Mr. Orange was also this like strange uh, damsel in distress in this film and I don't know if the movie intended this or not to for like it to have this weird Romeo and Juliet ending with Mr. White and Mr. Orange's tragic fate but here we are. <laughs> Vic Vague is outside. Hold on. Hey welcome home Vic. Not as afraid of fail. Oh huh? it's Mr. Blonde. His name is Vic Vega I'm guessing. Interesting. I see you sitting there, but I don't believe it. How you doing, toothpick? Hey. Ah. Toothpick? That's the last guy to call toothpick. Look at him, he's like <laughs> the tallest one in the room. This week's been crazy. I've had my head on my ass the whole time. It's funny you should say that because that was me and your daddy were just talking about. I thought you had your head up your ass. Oh, so this is his son. He's also involved oh, in the like high side thing. He just, so but he wasn't wearing the clothes, so I guess he told them where to go, but he wasn't a part of it. I mean, it is the sun, you know what I mean? He's not gonna get his hands dirty. You don't lie to a guy, just don't throw you in the It's very true. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, enough of this shit, break it up. <laughs> so they're definitely like old, old friends to do this in front of the dad like this. First, I gotta prove to, uh asshead that I can get a regular, you know, job, job type job before I can move out on my own. So he also has a parole officer that's on his ass. About, uh, so even he can't kind of <laughs> uh, get caught doing shit like that. So yeah, nobody's taking the injured guy to the hospital. He probably might kill everybody involved in the heist to not go back to prison. Call Matthews, the foreman, and tell him he's got a new guy. Boom. You get a time card. It's clocked in and out for you every day. And at the end of the week, you get a nice paycheck. He's not going to lift any crates, you guys. You know, it's that's a poor man's work, you know. He's he's Place without this gang too much of a badass to, to do a regular man's and job. And if he decides you know? to make a surprise visit, that's the day we sent you to Tustin. He's toothpick, Vic, you know. He's not strong enough. <laughs> what you guys are doing, but I'd like to know when I can come back, you know, do some real work. And just, just hear me out. Is he going to talk about that job, the diamond job? But Vic here, I mean, he's only been nothing but good luck for us. The guy's a fucking rabbit's foot for trying out loud. I guess he jinxed it by saying that, oh, you're good luck for us. They sure didn't see what was coming. How would you feel about pulling a job with about five other guys? I'd feel great about it. <laughs> yeah. He was probably already a psycho going into the prison, but now he's like completely like someone who has no like boundaries and doesn't even have a problem going back to prison. All I know is what Vic told me, man. He said the place turned into a fucking bullet festival. What is the plan here, by the way? Kidnap a cop, try to find out the rat, I guess? And who tipped them off? Do I sound like I'm fucking joking? And then He's what? He's fucking driving around with a cop in his trunk. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the police are looking for this guy. Over a hundred cops show up for one cop being in trouble. I don't know if trouble. anybody's got the loot. I don't know who's dead. I don't know who's alive. I don't know who's caught. I don't know who's not. So much for the rabbit's foot. You know what? <laughs> this poor cop. He was just doing his job, you know? You hear me? Because you're gonna fucking talk. You're gonna fucking talk. You fucking know anything. You fucking know. He probably doesn't even know. You know, he just probably got the call. Holy shit, Orange is dead. No, he's not dead. But he will be if we don't get him taken care of. <laughs> Sometimes I do forget about Orange just lying there. <laughs> just bleeding out like that. You're so fucking smart, huh? Who did it? Yeah, what'd you come up with, huh? You think I did it? You think I fucking set you up? I don't know. He could, but he's also the son of the master of the heist, so. Where's Joseph? I don't know, I ain't talked to him. I talked to Dove. He says daddy's coming down here and he's fucking pissed. Daddy's pissed. <laughs> Nepo babies are always the loudest. But the dad, he's probably like working it out. Already f found out who the rat is, I guess. 
fucking snake charmer. What do you think? I'll call a doctor to fix him right up. Now what happened to brown and blue? They actually have a doctor who will show up here? Okay. Maybe he could tell us who the fuck set us up. If you fucking beat this prick long enough, I'll tell you you started the goddamn Chicago fire. Now that don't necessarily- <laughs> That is true. It's just one cop. There's Who's probably the like Please, two dozen cops or maybe a hundred cops the there. Just for probably sake. got the call be like, we need backup, we need backup. He probably doesn't even know what was happening. Blondie, stay here and babysit them too. While I'm following you, I'll arrange some sort of a doctor for our friend. <laughs> Why is Mr. White looking at Blonde like that? You can't leave these guys there with him. Why not? Because he's a fucking psycho. Yeah, he is right. Can't leave these guys <laughs> with that guy. He might sell them for parts in the black market. Mr. White rips out his gun. He's sticking it in my face, calling me a motherfucker, saying he's gonna blow me away. But you did call him a little doggy. <laughs> you started it. Oh no. They all did leave. The psycho behind with these guys. Oh no, he's taking off his jacket. What's he gonna do? Oh god. Guess what? I think I'm parked in the red zone. <laughs> oh no, I'm so scared. I told you I don't know anything about any fucking setup. I've been on the force for only eight months. They don't tell me anything. Yeah, that's what I suspected. He looks very young to be like in the know. You can torture me all you want. Torture about you. everything. That's, good. that's a good idea. I like that one. Oh no, he's a he might actually torture him. And the other guy too. Even your boss said there wasn't a setup. My what? You said that that guy was his boss? That's the son of a boss. I don't have a boss. You understand? You hear what I said, you son of a bitch? The fucking shit. Man. It's like, you're bleeding all over me after I slapped you. <laughs> Look it. I'm not gonna bullshit oh, you. Oh god. Okay? Tarantino and his gaggle of psychos in his movies is just awesome. I don't really give a good fuck what you know or don't know. But I'm gonna torture you anyway. Yeah. I think he gets off on this type of shit. It's amusing uh, to me to torture a cop. Yeah. You can say anything you want because I've heard it all before. God, God only knows what he's gonna do here. Cut him, kill him, all you can sexually do is abuse him. God knows. Pray for a quick death. And he's also a cop, so he probably has an axe to grind for putting him in the in prison. Oh, shit. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. He, look at him laughing. He gets off on this stuff. <laughs> oh, no. oh, One thing is for sure, he's definitely not the rat. He hates cops too much and he probably also hates... He hates to... mankind too much. You ever listen to K-Billy's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy is gonna... It's my personal favorite. Cut him open or something. Oh god, he's gonna play music while he does this shit? <laughs> Why did they leave him alone with like this guy? Is he gonna torture the dying dude or something? What are you doing? Motherfucker's having a party! Oh, this is the worst thing ever. I, I, this is actually worse than torture. It's the potential of the torture. Your torturer dancing with his weapons. Oh god. <laughs> it's the kind of hell that you don't imagine. Oh, he is cutting him. Oh no, he's gonna Hannibal Lecter him. He's probably gonna eat his face. Oh, you can hear it. What the fuck? He cut off his ear, bruh. Oh, no. Give him the fucking Mike Tyson treatment. What's going on? You hear that? <laughs> Man, I scarred him for life. I don't know how much of this I can take. I was like questioning whether or not this movie has action. Fuck that. This movie is... This movie has gore. <laughs> That's worse. 
And the fact is, they didn't even show us cutting him. Like, it was just the 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 noise, the agony. Right, and he just walks outside with bloody hands. And the fact that all of this is happening in the, this kind of like weird residential suburban neighborhood. Oh my god. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna set him on fire? What is happening? <laughs> what the fuck? Why am I even asking that? What are you doing, bruh? Oh god. Now I wish the... What was his name? Orange woke up for like a second and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh my god, he actually will set him on fire. Won't you set the entire warehouse on fire that way? What is- what the fuck? Why am I even asking? This guy's a real psycho. Oh my god, look at that. The missing ear. Shit. Oh, don't burn me, please! Ah! Ah! This is the worst way to go, too. I thought, like, oh, he's gonna get tortured and caught and shit. Oh, stop! Stop! Burning stop. alive. Oh, stop! Y'all through? Fuck, I hope he can, like, remove his stop. duct tape stop. or something. Don't stop. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> Did I manifest this? <laughs> Am I in the secret? <laughs> Man, I wish for Orange to get up and he got up. <laughs> Holy shit, maybe he got tired of the song and the screaming. <laughs> oh my god, look at how much he bled. The fact that he even could hold up a gun, like how is this even possible? How did he even get up? I can't look at his the side of his face, the cop's face, the missing ear. It's so real. <laughs> Both. More than what? <laughs> he keeps asking for people's names. He should definitely snitch. More than that. Just snitch to this cop, to everybody. Just, just become the rat. Listen to me, more than that. I'm a cop. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh shit. He knew as well? Oh, I was wrong on both fronts. Yeah, your name's Freddy something. So this guy was the rat. <laughs> Two cops are about to, like, you know, bleed out here. So this other cop also knew about this stuff, so he was in the know. How do I look? Not good, man. Not good. <laughs> they both look like they're gonna die. What? <laughs> He's laughing at, like, look at me, I'm <laughs> bleeding out and you're asking me about your fucking ear. I'm fucking deformed! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm fucking dying here! <laughs> oh my god, that is so funny. He's like, are you actually complaining about an ear even though that is so so gruesome to look at. This guy's injury is much worse. <laughs> He's like, you're complaining about the police not showing up over your ear, bitch. To get him. But I yeah, Freddy, Muniz, whatever, is gonna die. I'm so certain. He's gonna die bleeding out. He's gonna sit here and bleed. <laughs> Joe Cabot sticks his fucking head through that door. Let's see how Mr. Orange gets hired or infiltrates this operation. Cab is doing a job and take a big fat guess who wants on a team. This better not be some kind of Freddy Joe. Man. I'm in there, I'm up his ass. So he did go undercover and become part of the gang. Uh, worst job ever. <laughs> Mr. White. A little. About what? Brewers. Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah. Apparently they, they, they won the night before. So he did get friendly with Mr. White, like Mr. White mentioned. <laughs> the Brewers fan, his ass and he never Wisconsin. found out that this guy was and from the a cop. Bad <laughs> and he also had this trouble before with another job, like he said. Another undercover cop. Man, that guy shouldn't be doing this job. Use the commode story. What's a commode story? Scene, man, memorize it. Look, man, an undercover cop's gotta be Marlon Brando, right? The commode story? <laughs> to do this job, you gotta be a great actor. 
You gotta be naturalistic. You gotta be naturalistic as hell. Oh, I'm excited for this. So they have to like come up with shit. I mean, like this happened at one job. That's an amusing anecdote about a drug deal. Something funny that happened to you while you're doing a fucking job, man. Oh, so the devil's in the details. You gotta come up with a story or two over previous jobs. And this particular story takes place in a men's room. You gotta know if they got paper towels or a blower to dry your hands. Man, so much work goes into being an undercover cop. So much acting. You gotta be like an artist or something. <laughs> you gotta know every detail there is to know about this commode. What you gotta do is to take all them details, man, and make them your own. That makes sense. If you pretend to be somebody, you gotta pretend really well. Become a method actor <laughs> like Brando. I had a connection with this hippie chick up in Santa Cruz. Man, and my it's knew it. a little bizarre it how I different say. this movie is in relation to like an action whatever movie. We're so seeing all the events before, we're seeing all the events after, and we're just t like getting bits and pieces from everybody Every time I buy some weed, that we have to piece together. Four or five different fucking people. It's like fucking the Rashomon effect or something, where everybody's story is a little different. <laughs> she didn't want to go to the buy alone. The brother usually goes with her, but he's in Canada unexpectedly. What for? His traffic ticket's gone warm. His rehearsal went well. He remembers every single detail, and rightfully so, because they might ask questions, right? What happened here? What happened there? Oh, I'm gonna remember that the next time I have to, like, lie. I'll make up a story with details. Four Los Angeles County Sheriffs and a German Shepherd. They're waiting for you? No, it's just a bunch of cops hanging out in the men's room talking. So he's told the story so many times, he's rehearsed it so many times that he that's knows hard, all the man, details. That's a fucking hard and also knows <laughs> how to lie when somebody asks him a sto uh, like a question. Sure as that fucking dog can. They can smell it on me. This is a very interesting way to tell a story, but at the same time, I can hear a hint of an accent. Is this guy not American? There is an accent here, or maybe he's from Boston. This real sexy oriental bitch, you know? She starts screaming at him, Chuck, Chuck, what are you doing? Listen to the officer, put your hands on the- I know this is a fake story, but it just makes me so nervous whenever he's like walking close to the, the German desk. shepherd and these police for? officers. This fucking red Man, he made the story so real in his head. Shit, why is this making me so nervous? It's fake, it's fake, it's fake. <laughs> this whole movie is fake. <laughs> it's the power of a good story. Why is that dryer so fucking loud? You know how to handle that situation. Just shoot in your pants and dive in and swim. That convinced them. They're like, this guy doesn't take no shit. It's a funny guy. You remember the Fantastic Four? Oh yeah, with that uh, invisible bitch. <laughs> Invisible Motherfuckers. It's just like <laughs> the thing. Never heard her just being described like that. So he's married as an undercover cop? Like, is that his role? Don't pussy out of me now. They don't know shit. You're not gonna get hurt. The fucking Beretta. They believe every fucking word because you're super cool. Man. Seeing what like how everything panned out Ugh. he should have never left his room he should have never walked out the door she sneaks up on him and she puts some wacko glue on his dick and glues his dick to his belly <laughs> that's a woman not to be fucked with they had to call the paramedics to cut the prick loose <laughs> was he all pissed off he must have done something to her. <laughs> How would you feel if every time you had to take a piss, you had to do a fucking handstand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks for that guy. She's a keeper. <laughs> We're going to be using aliases on this job. Under no circumstances do I want any one of you to relate to each other. Watching all of these guys together in one room, knowing what happens, and also... And I don't want any talk about yourself personally. Even if I haven't seen the heist itself, I can't stop watching. I can't stop. No, like I can't. 
wait to find out what happens at the end. It's so bizarre. It's never happened before. Well, I want you guys Usually with movies like this where no action happens, I'd be so bored. But this is not boring at all. It's like I'm finding out who these people are. Mr. White. Okay. Mr. Blonde. Mr. Pink. Why am I Mr. Pink? <laughs> hey, come on. Pink is so cute. <laughs> Why can't we pick our own colors? Try it once, it doesn't work. You get four guys <laughs> all fighting over who's going to be Mr. Black. Ooh, everybody wants the color black. <laughs> well, Mr. Pink sounds like Mr. Pussy. How about if I'm Mr. Purple? I mean, that sounds good to me. I'll, I'll be Mr. Purple. <laughs> They're not, like, worried about the risks involved in this job. They're like, who gets what name? Pink sounds too feminine. <laughs> You're Mr. Pink. <laughs> who cares what your name is? All right, look, if it's no big deal to be Mr. Pink, you want to trade? Why not Mr. Black, though? Just pick Mr. Black. It's beneath me, you know? I'm Mr. Pink. Let's move on. I'd move on take I pink like over it. orange. Mr. Orange sounds weird. Sounds like a bad so omen. Goddamn it, how are you guys? You can hardly it's talk. like, I'm joking, but aren't oranges like a bad omen in movies with the Godfather and everything, you know? Let's go over it. Where are you? Vito was buying oranges when he got shot, you know? And now we have a Bleeding Mr. Orange. Crowd control. We handle customers and employees. That girl's ass. Sitting right here on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I wish uh, there was a separate movie, like a short film, just That's based Mr. on Pink? Mr. White and Mr. Orange's kind of conversations. They seem like uh, they got along really well, even to the end, you know, like to the where he was dying in his arms. I want to see their friendship a little bit. <laughs> Oh, 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 we're gonna see the shootout. We're gonna see how Orange gets shot. Oh, Tarantino is in bad shape in his own film. <laughs> oh man, look at Orange's face. It's like, you killed my brothers. Is he dead? Oh, he got shot in the head. He's dying now. How is he even functioning? How is he driving a car with a bullet in his head? God. Orange is wrestling so much with his conscience here. He just stood and watched his fellow cops die. Right there! Get in the fucking car! That's how. Oh, no. He had to shoot a civilian who was just defending herself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't believe she killed me. And now he's bleeding in her car. Just cancel that shit right now. You're hurt. That woman was a badass. You're a real fucking bad. Just shot him like it was just nothing. <laughs> Holy shit. Scared the shit out of me, Larry. I'm gonna die, I know. I thought one of the guys shot him. I thought the cops shot him, but no, it was a lady, like Bilbo says. I hope Blondie's dead over there. God, imagine if he wakes up. He's gonna shoot the shit out of everybody. Cut off his ear, it's gonna burn him alive. Yeah, oh no. This cut. He's gonna shoot Orange too. That was his friend, right? Blonde was his friend. He was gonna blow you to hell and make half for the diamonds. What did I tell you? That sick piece of shit was a stone cold psycho. Yeah, he's not buying it. You weren't there during the job, Betty. You didn't see how he acted. We did. You're saying that Mr. Blonde take the oh, satchel yeah. of diamonds and scram. Man. I'm I can't believe that these two cops are still alive. Were still alive. He got caught at a company warehouse full of hot items. He could have fucking walked. All he had to do was say my dad's name, but he didn't. He kept his fucking mouth shut. Yeah, he's not buying this bullshit. He knows the psycho better than the others. Who in four years never made a deal no matter what they dangled in front of him. You're telling me that now that this man is free. He might be a psycho, but he wasn't a rat. That's his argument. Oh, no. Blondie might be up. enjoying cutting people... Cutting people's ears off, but he may, might not have, like, you know, walked with the diamonds. What the fuck are you talking about? That lump of shit's working with the LAPD. Yeah. I told you, the dad has found out the rat before everybody else did. He is the mastermind. He's a good kid. 
We're all real emotional, but you're barking up the wrong tree. I know this man, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Mr. White's too good for this shit. The cocksuck that tipped off also, the cops and a Mr. Brown and a Mr. Blue killed. Mr. Blue is dead. Can't figure out which one is the cop, which one is the rat. How do you know all this? It's the only one I wasn't 100% on. That's your proof? Oh, shit. This is gonna be a Mexican standoff. And let's settle this with a fucking conversation. Yeah, nobody's Joe, having a conversation here. Kill that man, you die next. Mr. White is quite loyal to his friends. Don't make me do this. Larry, stop pointing that fucking gun at my dad! What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, Orange got shot again? What the fuck? And Pink. Pink is the only one alive. Oh, it's too early to tell, too early to tell. White is also alive. Yeah, just get out of here, <laughs> Pink. Let's go back to the restaurant, tip your waitress, and leave the country. <laughs> Oh, he ran with the diamonds too, I think. Oh my god, I, I didn't imagine this happening. Oh shit. Man, Mr. White. Oh, he's gonna be oh, in a world of hurt when he finds out. He's stuck up for the rat. It looks like it doesn't matter, they're gonna die together here. Oh, <laughs> why is this so sad? These two are the only people I was rooting for in this film. Looks like we're gonna do a little time. No, you're the only one that's gonna do a little time. Orange is either gonna die or. <laughs> Mr. White might blow out his head. <laughs> He's like, oh no, I killed my friends over nothing and now I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> oh my god, what a conundrum. What is happening? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely gonna do that. I'm just so shocked that Orange is still alive after getting shot twice. Drop the fucking gun! We're gonna fucking blow you away! <laughs> Mr. White, what a tragic anti-hero. <laughs> oh, no! Bruh. He did the right thing and the wrong thing at the same time. It- the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> gotta- gotta turn it off for a second. What? <laughs> Oh my god, that was not what I was expecting. I was expecting... I don't know what I was expecting. I actually had no expectations, no idea how this was gonna end. But oh, poor Mr. White. So he was the kind of like the protagonist of the film in, in, in a sort of way. And he had this bromance with, well, the rat. He didn't expect that that was, you know... Oh, and in order to save his brother, basically, he ended up doing the right thing, which is killing all the criminals, including the mastermind a dad behind all of it. Oh, only to get screwed over in the end, being like, I'm gonna go to jail and this motherfucker is not gonna join me. And I killed my boss and my, my all my friends for this. But I just remembered Pink got out. Mr. Pink got out. But did he actually get away with it? I don't know because there were cops sw like swarming the place. So maybe they apprehended him with the bag of jewelry. Diamonds. Oh my god. This <laughs> so much happened. Like so much happened in this film that this is not doing it justice. As you know, I write review breaks. So I'm going to come back with proper review breaks. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to rewatch this shit and gather my thoughts but before that i just gotta say poor mr white <laughs> justice for mr white he was like the nicest bad guy in this gang so bizarre 
man but yeah i'm going to be right back <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this reaction to reserve for dogs i'm so sorry i can still can't stop thinking about the ending i know it's supposed to be tragic but okay hear me out i don't think that mr orange should have just admitted that he was a cop at least that way mr white could have had some peace <laughs> but i guess it it ate in his conscience and he was like this is the end of my life i might as well come out with the truth because mr white really did uh you know pr protect me but protect my integrity save my life i don't know it didn't work but i i guess it did who knows we don't know the ending so now I I want to know from you guys what did you think about reservoir dogs did you like it did you dislike it what do you think the ending really is what is your interpretation of the ending did they all survive did they all die and what happened to mr pink i think he got arrested or maybe killed i don't know so let me know in the comments below and you know me i interact with every single comment so leave your thoughts below and of course if you want to watch the full reaction to this or if you just want to support this channel you can at patreon.com slash nation or you can make a one-time donation at buy me a coffee at Shrey Nation. You can also become a channel member by hitting on the join button next to subscribe button. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and subscribe to my second channel in case anything happens to this one. Thank you so much for sticking to the very end of this video. I appreciate you so much and if you enjoyed this video, maybe you'd like this one or maybe a playlist. Check them out and thank you so much and I hope I didn't waste your time. See you next video.